and do the video. What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So it has been a long day. We have played for roughly 10 hours. There's already been people. Shout out to Rob and other racks and all these other guys that have made um, the level 100 journey. They've already hit level 100 in roughly uh, like seven and a half hours through very, very efficient leveling, which is awesome. We haven't hit 75 in 10 hours just grinding and having an absolute blast with my community here on YouTube. So today I wanted to go over day one recap and just talk about some of the things that not only myself like, but my community like. We came up with this list together. So we got things we liked and things we did like. I would do want to start off just saying that as much hype there was surrounding this season, I can tell you up to 75, it doesn't disappoint. And I'll talk more about that in my final comments. So let's go ahead and go over the list here. We got a, a day one recap, things we liked and things we didn't like. So let's go ahead and go through all the things that we liked first and just kind of talk about these things. So one, the biggest one is the Helltide rework. The Helltide rework is absolutely amazing, okay? You run around, do all this stuff. Oh, wow, I got some stuff just chilling here too. That's, that's crazy. Um, there's some, the monsters, the quantity of monsters, right? the amount that you fight, the threat level, all of these things are amazing inside of the Helltide. The Helltide just plays so good. I think it's probably the, the best thing that has been changed in the new season. And we have been just farming it all day. We just recently got into Nightmare Dungeons, but this, the Helltide is definitely, definitely huge, man. This, this is what we wanted Diablo to be in Diablo 4 to be right the amount of mobs all the different surprises the the bloodborns the the helltide bosses and it's just absolutely great so big dub on the helltide work leveling much faster the big change coming with leveling up has been fantastic right you get these the, the potions then they already increase the um the amount of xp you get so in world tier 2 you're already at 50 percent or uh what is it yeah 50 percent and then world tier three you're at 150 and then world tier four which we're in now is 250 so you level so much faster so much faster this game we have just been blasting through all of the content it's been a it feels much better right the leveling system just feels so much better um next not looking through yellows this has been awesome as far as the inventory and not having to go through all this stuff I can tell you that like before we even got to world tier three and you start getting legendary items right your your regular legendaries um you know not ancestral or sacred but just regular ones after you get a slot there like you just don't even look at yellows like hey i have really good gloves i don't even care any yellow glove automatically salvage i'll take the resources it's made in, in inventory management and just looking through gear so much easier now a lot of these things that we can talk about but after, actually, after playing through it and just being on not the PTR and having a final product for the season, it just feels amazing. So, um, next, tempering and masterworking. These things feel great. We're about to unlock masterworking. There are some people that are already doing it in the community, which is awesome. Uh, people are absolutely loving it. The It's kind of like a gamble, though, uh, when it comes to like getting that perfect affix, hitting it three times. That's tough. But outside of that, masterworking is great. Tempering is amazing, especially early on. When you start tempering um, abilities on, like cold damage here and then lucky hit to immobilize, like things really start, like you get a nice, it's a nice power creep to your character, even at the lower levels. Um, there is some people in the community that don't, they kind of miss the like upgrading five times, which is kind of cool, but um, it is kind of a, a miss. Like it's it's gonna take some getting used to because like tempering something is just kind of that replacement until you can start master working. So um, all in all, I really do enjoy it. It's been it feels it feels pretty good. Glyphs early. Okay, this I happen to get like all of my paragon glyphs. Almost every single one of them. I think this is all of them actually. We got all of these by like level 65. 
and we were only doing um, hell tides, and we found them all in hell tides. So this made it a little refreshing how we didn't have to go through and just do nightmare dungeons. Like we're not required to do nightmare dungeons to find them. I know before that we could get these in like a hell tide or something like that, but it was very few, far in between. These things drop like candy now in a hell tide, which is really great as you're, you know, once you get past 15, you start filling out your paragon boards. Even though they're not level 15, just having them in there just really helps. It's a nice little power boost. So the fact that we get glyphs um, early and they drop more is pretty nice. Inventory. Oh, my God, guys. Inventory. I mean, not only do we want more inventory, right? The, the spaces, which is great. But, man, one, two, three. We got six still. But look at this. This is up to 75. I'm at level 75. I still haven't even filled in one, one chest, one chest in my in my inventory, my, like my stash. And a lot of this stuff I'm just gonna get rid of because I don't need it. Everything goes into the codex. It just feels absolutely amazing to be doing it um, after. And we've already actually maxed a couple of these. Like we got accelerating already maxed, which is fantastic. So inventory much better. I don't feel cluttered, like cluttered and just like. Oh man, every single dungeon or every single Helltide run, like I can't, I can't even do a Helltide for 10 minutes and my inventory is full, can't do anything, you know, uh, so that's great. Next, the consumable tab I feel is just going to fill up really, really quickly um, with things, which not necessarily is a bad thing, but I can see it filling up real quick with all of the different potions uh, and then Nightmare Sigils, but I think we're just going to be going through these very quickly, so I don't think it's going to be too bad. But outside of that, inventory, huge dub. We've already kind of experienced this again in the PTR, but this is just kind of confirming like my day one recap. Um, starter sets. So the starter extra sets that you got um, from, you know, these, these extra bonus powers that you get from like turning in stuff at the Iron Wolves or completing your seasonal journey these things are actually kind of nice it's it's really it's a good thing i don't think it's a bad thing i hope we don't ever do like full-on sets but getting these things and just unlocking these as you're going along and getting items like i can tell you i got the the uh offensive power for um incinerate which just allowed you to you know shoot three incinerates i don't even know where it's at flamethrower like shoot three your incinerate splits into beams like i got this at like level 15 or 16 and i used it all the way up until like 50 something and then we swapped over to frozen orb and then it was on and popping after that but to get like some of these starter <clears throat> like powers that you need for a particular build i thought was a really nice touch i hope they that you guys like the devs don't go like too in depth with adding these things um, more of like full on sets that just drop and you're just good to go. Um, Cause I still like the, the idea of finding particular powers and stuff like that, but to get just a couple of the main ones that you need, I thought was really, really nice. So um, that really, really helped me. Um, it, it felt like random with some of the other ones, but it, it was really good. Next horse speed in town. Oh my God. I don't know how long we've been calling for this. But now in town, you can move at a much faster speed to get through town, which is just absolutely amazing. Wow, we had all these just chilling in that Helltide. Um, this is a huge change. We needed this like season one, but I know it's not like one of those things that's at the top of the priority list, but it is a really nice quality of life fix to have this here. So uh, next, new potions rock, okay? I can just tell you right now, I know the devs may nerf it, but the Elixir of Holy Bolts is absolutely insane. I know it only lasts for 15 minutes, but in 15 minutes, if you're blasting through dungeons, you can easily do four plus the Nightmare Dungeons in 15 minutes. And killing an enemy, Holy Bolts, fire from the corpse, and just destroy everything in an AoE. It is nuts, okay? these things are insane um next of course the momentum very very good i like momentum for 
just running around and doing hell tides. This is great. You just move around really, really fast. It's awesome. I like Elixir of Momentum for the overworld stuff and Holy Bolts for the dungeon stuff. Next is the Profane Mind Cage. I didn't really get to use this, but um, for the next hour, you increase the Helltide monster level. So if you're enjoying farming Helltides, you get the cap, so you're, you're able to get increased um, EXP and Cinder Drops and Threat Gain. However, one of my community members did try this. If you do die, this goes away, and you have to pop a new one. So keep that in mind. As opposed to these two, if you die, you still get to use them. So Profane Mind Cage, when you die, it's just gone. So uh, I don't know if anybody else has had any other good experience with this, but I still like this idea as long as you don't die. It's really, really good for just farming in the overworld. So potions are awesome. Now onto things that we don't like because, of course, with the good, there always comes the bad, right? So enchanting feels really bad, okay? Enchanting does not feel good. Okay. Uh, enchanting still feels like a it's like it's a little off. It kind of sucks. Um, however, tempering and all of those things are really really good. It's just enchanting and just is a kind of a drag. Um, like being able to just take an item and still you know come in here and yeah, there's a lot here. It still feels bad, but it's similar to Diablo three, but. Um, the good thing about all this is that they did take a a cap on the gold. So this just feels not as good as like tempering or master working, but I'm glad we still have this to kind of maximize like a particular item that we're really trying to do. So um yeah, that's all I can say about that. Helltide whispers, okay? Um throughout the day of just farming these, the Helltide whispers actually change as you're going through your world tiers. So all the ones in World Tier 2 are different than 3 and 4. Um, so that's that's good and bad. However, if you look here, we have a 3 and a 1 and a 3 and a 1, which only gives you 8. So uh, yes, there is this bonus one, but that's just the normal ones that are there. However, these are supposed to be kind of like the Vamp Tide Reset um, Whispers that are added to every single Hell Tide. These are underwhelming. Uh, the, some of these are, you know, it, there, it's not so much the difficulty. It's, they're just a little underwhelming. It kind of sucks that you have to do two hell tides just to be able to do one tree of whispers turn in. I know the vamp tides as well as the seasonal, um, whispers from last season. Once you did one, that was a turn in and then you just had to wait. So if they did it, if the devs did it to where we could get a turn in at least one, from each hell tide, I think that would feel much better. But otherwise, I found myself multiple times today not even trying to complete these because not only does it only give me eight, but I just found myself doing other things. So yeah, just a little underwhelming. I think there could be a little bit of a buff there. Um, potion gold cost. It's not it's not terrible considering how much gold that we can get um, from the Tree of Whispers. But I will say, it seemed like it's a little expensive once you start spending things. Like 5 million, 7 million. It's not bad. It just felt like a, it was a little high. I, I don't know what it was prior. I don't think it was that high. But, I mean, one Tree of Whispers turned in in World Tier 4, you're getting like 6 million. So it's not too bad. But uh, just it's just something minor. Next, the vendors are useless. I added this one last. This is the final thing to the video, guys. Once you get in even world tier two, once you get regular legendaries, you're no longer looking at yellows. And I know this is a big problem for the devs and they want to balance things and make yellow items useful still, as opposed to just legendaries, but they're not. So they really got to look at that. I don't know what the, the answer is to that, but in the vendors now, all we can buy is yellow and blues. Um, no one's ever going to use these, whereas prior to, you could actually get a really good yellow item and imprint a legendary on it. So you could find a god tier item in the vendor. It, you know, it's here and there, but you could still find something that you needed and just reroll one of the affixes on it, and that would be great. But now, you're never going to buy any of these items, because at most, you can only put four affixes on this instead of five. 
Uh, so it's better with the drop rates just to, you know, find yellow I or legendary items. So devs, I don't know. This could use a big buff or rework. I'm not really sure what you guys could do with this. Um, cause I don't know if you want to put like legendaries in here. That just seems weird, but, um, this could definitely use an overhaul or a buff, something like that. I'm not really sure, but, uh, yeah, guys. So day one closing, closing statements overall, I absolutely love day one day one. This was a fresh restart to the game. I have really enjoyed myself playing with my community today. We have been blasting. We hit 75, which is amazing. Um, and we've just been having a great time with all of the mechanics and all of the systems that we've been able to play today. Um, next, we'll probably have another um, like recap of stuff once we can get in and really start experiencing the end game, like doing the pit, doing all the boss fighting, and doing all the farming for that. Oh, one other thing I should mention as a closing argument: these were these all these items here is what we got from doing. Uh, hell tides today now we did do four varshan runs so just imagine the amount of mats for varshan runs but we did do four varshan runs today so these on top of four varshan runs a lot of resources just from doing hell tides it's actually kind of nice remember they did they did buff the drop rates of these kind of things in other systems so i do want to i do want to give credit where credit's due like that is nice it, it felt really good um, just from doing hell ties today. So overall day one, love it. I'm not trying to overhype it. I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping the level head here and not get too excited to end the hype. But this was awesome. I really did enjoy today. I really hope that as we continue into the full end game that we really, it just sticks and we can just really improve from there because I want Diablo 4 to be great. So yeah, guys, like the video. Let's get this thing over 100 likes or 50 likes. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of your day one. If you guys have been playing and grinding, let me know down in the comments below. Some of the stuff that you liked, didn't like. Let's try to open a conversation. Maybe the devs will see this and we can really get some changes going. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.